Now, this is a movie we've been trying to see for a long time. We've heard a lot of buzz about it since the summer. Um, really heavy subject matter that we're going to get into, um, but it's definitely very important. This is directed by Jonathan Glazer, based on the novel by uh, uh, Martina Amos, uh, who's a woman. The story takes place in World War II Germany outside of the Auschwitz uh, concentration camp with uh, the Haas family. Uh, Commandant Rudolf Haas, played uh, by Christian Friedel, um, he, he's in charge of the camp. But the story is not about the camp. The story is about him and his family. Um, with his wife, Hedwig, played by Sandra Huller, who, of course, we saw in Anatomy of the Fall. They are trying to build this idyllic life. Um, they, they have a fan, they have four kids. She's got this enormous garden in the background. They have a pool. They're trying to raise their family, be good mothers and fathers. And this is all happening next to a concentration camp, which sounds horrific. And it is, but at the same time, it's not because, uh, this movie is not about the victims. It is about the people that perpetrated these atrocities. And it's about, humanizing the bad guy but not in the oh they're people too in it's more in the oh this was these were everyday people that carried these things out that stood by while it happened that were complicit um that were were completely okay with what was going on and uh the movie is from their perspective and you, you get hints of the horrors that are going on next door, uh, primarily through an incredible soundscape. There's a constant rumbling going on in the background of the crematoriums burning 24 hours a day. There's the sounds of, of the slave labor factories. There's screams, but just ever so faint. I mean, the, the, I mean, they have like small children and like the children, they don't really hear it or they're, they're just kind of deaf to it. There's gunshots again, off in the distance. And you, we know from, from history that that means people are getting, getting killed every time uh, you see one there is this terrible imagery of the trains constantly arriving. And this is all against the background of this idyllic garden, this green space, the pool. They have a birthday party. They celebrate d different things all while these terrible things are going on next door. And so it's it's a real look at what's often been called the banality of evil, just everyday people carrying out unbelievable acts. I think uh, the Zone of Interest is a really important movie. Um, one of the people, one of the, how do I get my thoughts together? One of the things I thought about while I was watching this feature, amongst you know the horrors of war and tragedy and violence and uh, incredible performance and the way it's shot, uh, is is of my fellow film reviewer, fellow film reviewer Mark Kermode and his review of Jojo Rabbit, right, the Taika Waititi film about. Uh, a young boy who is going to Nazi summer camp and learning to be a Nazi in World War II Germany and kind of how he travels through that and ends up, you know, not really working out. Um, it's a bit of a comedy and Kermode infamously really didn't like it. He really didn't like it because he thought it made light of the Nazis. It made light of the monsters. Like it, it, it treats them as if they could be somewhat redeemable or have some kind of, you know, like lighthearted human side because really everybody's human and that's not the way it should be looked at. Well, Zone of Interest, I think, is a fantastic direction away from that very idea that, that, that these are people who are like capable of, I don't, I don't know, love and affection because ultimately like the people in the zone of interest kind of are, they're people just like everybody else. They, they live lives that they deem are normal. They have goals and aspirations, a home that they love, a family, a family they cherish. Like they don't want any of those things to change. They just happen to also have this horrific ideology that's been so built into who they are and what they do that they've completely given themselves and their families to it. And they're surrounded by it, by the sounds of it and the horror of it and the, the, the look and the smell and the taste in the air and the ash. It's disgusting and it's horrifying. And Glazer shoots it with this like unreal, unflinching like tension set cameras and, and microphones all over the set. So the audience, the, 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 our actors are acting as naturally as possible, just capturing them in their most like basic instinctual presence while they are operating as a mother and a father and employees, uh, and expectants of, uh, uh, a concentration camp. It's really hardcore, man. It's really hardcore. And it's really great. And I feel like I'm rambling. So she probably give me some direction. Andy, where do we, t where do we start talking about? Yeah. This 
Um, well, it's again, th th there's a what is the plot? What is the story? So the, they're raising their family. But what what is kind of the catalyst is um, a couple of businessmen arrive and they have a, a meeting with uh, the commandant um, where they outline plans for what will be a crematorium. And if you don't know, and I had to do some research for this, but Rudolf Haas was kind of the mastermind of mass murder in the these uh camps at the time um he perfected of like how how do we efficiently exterminate people um and he figured out meth methods for that so that's all going on in, in the background but it kicks off with this um this business meeting and this eventual construction of uh this crematorium but again it's the movie's not about the camp it's about the the family you know they have uh s struggles of you know, raising raising their kids, dealing with you know work life balance, their relationship, uh, that that sort of thing. I think one of the amazing thing that Glazer does is th this movie is, is it's uh, it's obviously very heavy, but it's not unwatchable like you might expect because the horrors are around the the edge uh, of what's going on. Like we all know from history what what's happening. Uh, but it's again, it's not grotesque. It's not graphic. It's all mostly done through sound. But he does really clever things like near the beginning, there's a scene where uh, they open packages and get clothes out. And you're like, oh, they, they must have just ordered some clothes and now they're going through them. And you slowly realize like these aren't clothes they've ordered. They're clothes that have come off the prisoners that that have arrived on the trains and they're, you know, stealing their their belongings and taking it's one of those. Oh, you're it's when it clicks it doesn't because it doesn't click right away <clears throat> it's then shocking and again it's the mundanity which which is carried out it's like oh these are clearly other people's clothes let me go through them let me go through these pockets oh there's something nice in here but l lucky us um and there's a lot of that kind of thing in the film i don't want to get too much in into that but it's it's a lot of showing what what these how these people carrying out were benefiting and you know, because at first I thought, well, maybe they don't know. Maybe the family doesn't know. Maybe the mother doesn't know. And they're just, you know, right. doing, doing what they're, they're told. But the longer the film goes, it's, it's very clear that they're, they know exactly what's going on. They're complicit. And not only that, they're essentially rewarded for what's going on. Uh, he's, he's rewarded with promotions. They're recorded with, reported with the, you know, this really nice living situation. They have, they have live in, um, house servants. And I say that as they were, obviously still slave labor, but they were house servants and that that was their job. Um, you know, they live an incredibly comfortable life. At one point she says, I'm the, you know, people call me the, uh, the queen of Auschwitz because I have this lovely garden I, and I raise my kid like, and she gets kind of whatever she wants. They love their life here. Um, and it just kind of shows you the cost and all the, throughout the whole film, there's, again, it's, there's the, the, the chumming and churning of machinery. There's the gunshots in the distance. There's screams of torture, just barely audible. The children don't even hear it. It's just, uh, it's just over their, their head. So it's, it, sure. it's so haunting, um, well, the whole time. You, you hit it perfect. Like the, the slow turn of realization for your audience is like, handled so so perfectly here masterfully even by glazer like because when the trailer does not give any of this stuff away the trailer just shows hey there's there's a family that's living next to what looks like a concentration camp they don't tell you what concentration camp it is they don't tell you in what capacity this family works there they don't tell you any of that and as you watch the film and you start to answer these questions for yourself only through subtext only through subtext because like you said the violence is never shown only through subtext you're told these things these like slow turns of realization for you of what you're watching and what you're seeing and what those sounds represent is horrifying. Like it, it, it creates a pit in the bottom of your stomach. Like it, it is genuinely difficult to watch. And Glazer shoots this in, in a brilliant like match with his theme of, with this incredibly rigid, always on a tripod camera that is typically just placed in the scene against a wall or somewhere in a corner. Apparently the way they rigged this up is they put a bunch of cameras uh, in where our scenes were going to be. And then our actors just acted them out. They're fixed cameras all the time. And then they put that together in editing. So you'll have like, I don't know if anybody ever listens to the show ever played like the old Resident Evil games, but like those first couple Resident Evil titles, it was like all security cam footage for your horror game. You can't move the camera. You're locked in place 
what you see in the frame is what you have to take in. It's, it's, it's what you can, it's the information you can perceive when the camera changes because the, cause the camera's not going to do it for you. There's no cameraman who's going to steady cam our characters and follow them. There's nobody who's going to dolly along. It's nearly all going to be fixed. And while you're looking for our characters and information and, hey, that helper over there looks like she has a black eye. What's that guy about? Or, hey, that guy looks like he's wearing a prison jumpsuit. You're also seeing things like just over the top of the garden wall, the tops of factory buildings. Yeah. And you're hearing like the steam, you're, you're seeing the steam of an engine, of a train engine roaring by on a track and coming to a stop. And us, the adults in the room, know what those things mean. You can put it together. Like it's, it's, it's very obvious. Um, but if you took, showed this movie to like a five-year-old, they would just be super bored. They wouldn't know any of it like and they wouldn't see it and they're never going to see anything in here that's rated R and they're not going to see anything that like chills them to their core because they don't have any of that context. As an adult who knows what you're watching, chilling, chilling. And it truly creates a connection between the screen and the audience that like few films do. Glazer has managed to like cobble something together here that transcends language. It's, it's all in German. Doesn't matter. Like transcends time like and truly has a message that matters like really incredible work really incredible work dude like i wish we'd seen this movie earlier in the year i wish we'd seen it before our top 10 list um andy andy what else what yeah. else do we say without giving stuff away yeah <laughs> so th this would have been right at, this would have been my number one movie had i gotten to see it uh in in time yes the, uh it's been described kind of as big brother it, it, it's shot in that reality tv way in the house at least where uh, yeah, the cameras are just set up and the actors just do the scene and this the, it also allowed for a lot of improvisation. Uh, there's a lot of improv throughout a lot of the different scenes because they wanted a real natural uh, feel. And also as heavy as this movie is, it's PG-13. Like that's how you know it's not yeah. like something, you know, there's not tons of violence or anything like that. Uh, but it's, it's still in, incredible in its messaging. There's a really interesting subplot that, that we see actually shot in kind of a negative uh, wait, uh, film negative. I think it's where infrared. There's a, a girl, yeah. infrared. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a girl in in town, um, a, a Polish girl who rides her bike close to the concentration camp, kind of where where the uh, the prisoners work the fields, and she goes and hides food. She takes like bags of apples, and she goes and hides it uh, in in the hillside, or she hides it underneath uh, work equipment, and so it's it's like the one person the one hint of, of resistance that's going on. It's just this in, innocent girl um, who's based on a, a, a real person who was actually there. And I, I read as much as like, that is actually that woman's bike in the film. Like it's the, like her original bike from, uh, from then. So you do have like these hints of, of resistance, but it's so small and so almost futile. Um, but it's, it's still, you know, acts of defiance in, in the face of these horrors. Andy's mentioned it a couple times already, but just to kind of wrap up my thoughts before recommendations, I want to reiterate this movie should win best sound. It is like not only are Brits of it experimental in how sound is presented, including a, an overture at the open, which is nuts. Yeah. Um, but like the way sound is used to present a, like a subtext that you aren't seeing is really, really incredible. I, in fact, I was looking at IMDb trivia earlier. Apparently uh, their composer had composed a lot more music for it. And in an early edit, it had way more music and they dialed it all back in favor of what's here. It's very intentional. It's very designed. It's wildly effective. Like, I don't know, man, like I, I there's some good, some good stuff for best sound. But I don't think anybody beats what's happening here. This is genuinely creative in a way that I didn't expect. Um, as well as the whole feature, like it's, it is, it's really good. A Andy had a great tweet about it just the other day. Uh, uh, follow probably what act Dr. Draper. I think that's your handle. I'm not even sure. We should yeah. probably say our handles at some point. Um, yeah, you <laughs> yeah. tweeted, you said it, you said it might be the most important Holocaust movie since Schindler's list. And I think, I think you're right. Um, it's super important, dude. <laughs> Zone of interest is really important. It bones me out. A24 can't get it in front of people. I get it's really specific, but boy, like I, you would think this would be in more places. It's really hard to find. The, the Oscar noms will, will definitely help with that. And it'll be more widely 
scene. Um, but yeah, you know, Schindler's List is also a very hard watch, and that movie didn't shy away from from the very graphic violence and torture and torment. This is to kind of takes an, the opposite of approach, where we've seen all that, we know all that. Let's look at the people responsible. Um, yeah. It's incredible. Like uh, I've never seen anything like this, and I'd heard amazing things that it, that it was just something else, and that it, it it'll change you. Yeah, yeah. The zone of interest is incredible. Andy, recommendations? I'm ready. Oh, would you recommend uh, the zone of interest? <laughs> um, I would. I feel this is one of those movies, like Twelve Years a Slave or uh, Schindler's List, where everyone should see this movie. You need to see this. It's an education. Um, again, it, it's heavy subject matter, but it's not impulse. It's not too hard to sit through. It's PG 13. Um, so it, it is digestible, I think by most audiences, but, uh, it's so haunting and it's such, uh, an incredible look at just how everyday people, um, can carry out things like this. Like these weren't boogeymen and monsters. They were husbands and wives and mothers and children and siblings. And, and again, it's not just about the, the physical tortures. It's about the idea, the, uh, idealism and the uh these people are believers they believe that what is happening what they're doing is is right is the right thing yeah so highly uh, recommend yeah andy's right it is a wildly important feature bold cinema fans you are going to eat so good when you go see zone of interest it is so different and thoughtful and interesting i don't think it'll play the same at home go see it in a the theater i'll probably go see it again at some point if not soon like when they start doing yeah like you know amc like oscar roundup week when they like fathom events runs all the oscar movies again like i might try to go sneak it in on a big screen somewhere Dude, Zone of Interest is so good. It's so good. It's top 10 material. It's excellent. It, like I said, it's it's nominated for Oscars, and, and it, it may earn them. Um, and that's our show. God, what what an episode. A uh, little, little, little bit lopsided, but things about adaptation, right? Zone of Interest is adapted from a book. And, you know, I heard that it was a pretty different book, by the way. I think, I think, I think Jonathan yeah. Glazer went the, went the way of like Kubrick and, and, and Stephen King making The Shining. It was like, okay, I, I see the book. I'm making it this way. And I think it might be better for it. Mean Girls, meanwhile, adapted from adapted from adapted. What a strange time at the movies. Andy, what are we watching next week? So there are no big releases in theaters next week, but we were gonna we are gonna be taking a look at Society of the Snow, uh, which is a drama on Netflix about the Chilean uh, rugby team that crashed over the Andes in the seventies and had to resort to um, cannibalism in order to survive. This movie was made in nineteen ninety four, or a, a version of this movie was made in nineteen ninety four with Ethan Hawke called Alive. Uh, this version is by J A Bayona and is in Spanish. Uh, excited to see that, and then. Uh, I think we might take a look at Nyad or one of these other uh, Oscar nominees. Uh, there's there's a lot out, um, so it might be a double double streaming week. Nyad is just all I know is that Jodie Foster and Net Benning are in it, and it's uh, a swimming uh, drama. And Net Benning is a sw swimmer. Jodie Foster's the coach. It's kind of all I know about that. And uh, Zach, tell us about Strawberry Mansion. Yeah, Strawberry Mansion. So uh, Strawberry Mansion is a mini review I want to do next week. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, you can go check it out now. Uh, Andy and I saw a trailer for it in 2021 when it came out. It is about a, uh, it's a science fiction, low mega low budget indie, a la Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's about a, uh, a tax auditor, a dream tax auditor. Uh, who a lonely man uh, who travels around the country to uh, meet with clients and, and, and audit their dreams as they've been recorded on these like tape devices and tax things in them as a cor as corporations of the future have learned to tax people and make money off of things. And he goes and meets this old woman who uh, lives in this uh, wonderfully red mansion, discovers she has thousands of tapes. And as he starts to kind of dig into those and look at her dreams through these very lo-fi, goofy helmet thing he puts on and goofy edits. Um, you end up like kind of departing to this magical world of like the real and the unreal and dreamlike romanticism. Uh, kind of goofy. I'll have to send Andy the trailer. It sounds like a weird flick, but I, I'm excited to talk about it. Honestly, I took the time. I think it's worth talking about. I think 
I think there's something neat there. It's got a bit of heart to it. So look forward to that next week. But in between uh, now and then, if you enjoyed the show today, off script episode 240, Mean Girls, and boy, I've done too much podcast. The zone, the, the the zone, zone of interest. The zone of interest. The best thing you can do to support us and help me get my memory right is subscribe to Offscript Film Review wherever you are listening and or watching right now. If you're watching on YouTube, we got individual reviews coming out, custom things, all kinds of things happen on the YouTube page. Subscribe here and go check us out over on YouTube if you haven't. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, all the usual social media stuff. Uh, we're on iTunes and Spotify, iHeartMedia, Google Play, anywhere you find your audio podcast. You might be listening to us there right now. And if you are, hit that sub button for us. Does does huge things for us. You have no idea how big of a change that makes in the podcast world. And if you could swing it, I mean, if you really want to go for the extra credit, you could leave a little rating and review, a little, a little five star and a little something about how much you like the show, how, how great you think Andy's opinions are, what you think of our Oscar noms. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just, you could leave anything in there. And and, and the, the great algorithm in the sky will turn it into something that will help us make more episodes of Off Script. But anyway, the point is we like movies, we like watching them, and we want to keep talking about them. So please do us a solid. Leave a rating and review where you can, or subscribe, or whatever. Share with your friends. Share with somebody. And uh, you can always find us at offscriptfilmreview.com, and you can leave us uh, correspondence via email at mail at offscriptfilmreview.com. From all of us at Offscript, the home of Bold Cinema, I'm Zach Lewis. And I'm Dr. Draper. Thanks for watching. <laughs>